There comes a time when God abandons men. God comes to a point where He lets a people go. Let's them go to the consequences of their own sinful choices. They will not accept his counsel. They spurn all his reproof, as Proverbs says. So they eat the fruit of their own choices. And they have to be satisfied with the devices they have chosen. Of the Pharisees, Jesus said, Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. Matthew 15, 14, the most terrifying words, let them alone. It's a frightening thing to think about that. Frightening thing to think that you might be abandoned by God, that the opportunity for salvation is past, that the day of grace is over. The passages that I read to you relate to an individual in the case of Samson, but for the most part they relate to a group such as the Pharisees or to a nation such as Israel. And I think it's very relevant to talk about this because it's pretty convincing that God has abandoned our nation. God has abandoned America to the effects of its sinful choices. Whoa, this isn't the first nation that it's happened to. This is the story of history. Acts 14, 16, the Apostle Paul said, In the generations gone by, He, God, permitted all the nations to go their own way. This is the story of history. All the nations in history go their own way. So like the nations of old, like the nations past, we follow the same cycle of having the truth, rejecting the truth, and being abandoned by God. C.S. Lewis was writing in his book, The Problem of Pain, and he wrote this, The lost enjoy forever the horrible freedom they have demanded and are therefore self-enslaved. God will abandon sinners to their own choices and the consequences of those choices. And just what is this abandoning act on God's part? It is the removal of restraining grace. It is when God lets go and turns a, a society over to its own sinful freedoms and the results of those freedoms. No scripture more directly confronts this abandonment and its consequences than Romans 1 does. Here is the most graphic and the most comprehensive discussion of what it means to be abandoned by God, and it is the best passage that I know of to explain the moral chaos and the confusion that we experience in our own nation at this very time. God's wrath is already at work in our culture. We're not waiting for it. We are currently experiencing it. Drop down to verse 24. And here is the defining section on what it means to be abandoned by God. Verse 24, God gave them over. Verse 26, God gave them over. Verse 28, middle of the verse, God gave them over. Three times you have the statement, God gave them over. This term paradidomi in the Greek can have a judicial sense. It can be used of a judgment made on a criminal who is then handed over for punishment. Each of these phrases expresses the fact that the wrath of God has acted judicially to sentence sinners. It is God officially giving them over. It is God letting them go to the uninterrupted cause and effect their sinful choices produce. 
When this judgment falls, there is a depriving of restraining grace, and sin runs rampant through a society. Sin is both the cause of this and the effect, and the next cause and the next effect as it goes on and on and on. Sin is the reason and sin is the result. Sin is the cause and sin is the consequence. Now I want you to notice the wrath of abandonment in its progression. This will help you to understand why I say we're experiencing it not only in America but in the world and particularly in the Western world today. Look at verse 24. When the wrath of abandonment goes into action, this wrath which is defined for us as God giving them over follows three steps. It follows three sequential steps. You notice, therefore, and that of course connects it to the prior passage, the prior passage has as its leading statement, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. And then there are a number of statements about why the wrath of God is revealed, because the truth is suppressed, because that which is known of God is rejected, etc., etc. And then in verse 24 you come back to what that wrath is, therefore God gave them over. And first of all, God gave them over in the lusts of their hearts to impurity that their bodies might be dishonored among them. The first indication in a society of the wrath of abandonment is sexual immorality. Sexual immorality. When a society becomes pornographic, when the general character of a society can be seen to be immoral, this wrath is in effect. When man is abandoned by God, when a society is abandoned by God, it operates only out of the passions of its own impure heart. It operates in the lusts of the heart leading to impurity. The heart is wretched, the heart is immoral, and the body follows. So you see that in verse 24. First, the lusts dominate the heart, leading to impurity, and the bodies follow in most dishonorable ways. The heart is wicked and unrestrained, and the body follows, and you have a pornographic culture. We can go back pretty readily in our own country to the sexual revolution connected to the hippie movement, connected to the playboy empire beginning, and since then this society has become increasingly pornographic until even the internet is dominated by millions and millions of immoral pornographic websites to feed the insatiable lusts that dominate our culture. This leads to the smashing and crushing of marriage. This leads to horrific and horrendous abuse of children, pedophilia, all kinds of child abuse, all kinds of pornography involving children that continues to run rampant at a wild pace because restraining grace has been removed. And sex runs rampant. Marriage becomes a minor option as people engage in immoral behavior readily and constantly without commitment. That's just step one. So you look at a society and ask, is it driven by sexual immorality? Is it filled with lust in the heart leading to impurity and the body follows in dishonorable behavior? And the answer for our own world and our own society is yes. And it would be very hard to imagine one nation in this media-saturated Western world in which we live, it would be hard to understand one nation going this way 
without dragging all of the world exposed to its culture through the media with it. And so it's not just a national issue, it's a world issue. But that's just step one. Step two is in verse 26. For this reason, God gave them over, here's the second step, to degrading passions. Now we're not just talking about passions, we've added degrading. We're going down. There is a greater debauchery here. The degrading passions can be defined as gross affections, vile desires, perversion, or even inversion. And here it is defined. Their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural. Plain and simple, lesbianism, homosexuality. And the Holy Spirit first in this passage refers to the degradation of women because they are usually the last to be affected in the decay of morals because they have a mothering instinct and a protective instinct over their own children. But when the wrath of abandonment is in force, even the women fall to the degrading passions. And in our culture, the lesbian movement has been vocal and relentless and passionate and fierce and even violent. Proof that absolutely all virtue is gone. When motherhood, the highest normal human virtuous relationship, is abandoned and the people who do it are elevated as cultural icons. All virtue is gone when homosexuality invades the female gender. And verse 27 adds, in the same way also the men abandon the natural function of the woman and burned in their desire toward one another. Men with men committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their error. And there's a little slip in of the consequential wrath. What is the due penalty of their error that they receive? Venereal disease, AIDS. That's going to escalate too in this wrath of abandonment, there is also going to be the consequential wrath of sinful choices leading to deadly diseases. Homosexuality is the second step. So look at a society. When you see a society that is pornographic, that is into sexual immorality, fornication, adultery, as a way of life, as a dominant way of life, which is not only in existence but approved and exalted in every way in the media, you know the wrath of abandonment is in operation. And then, when a society also exalts homosexuality, lesbianism, and male homosexuality or sodomy, you know that it is even sinking deeper. But there's a third step. And the third step is in verse 28. Just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, Here's the third step. God gave them over to a depraved mind. First, the heart is rotten, and the body follows, and then the mind goes. What is a depraved mind? Well, the word literally means tested and found useless, disqualified for its intended purpose. A non-functioning mind. Reasoning is so corrupted that it is crippled. The faculty, the intellectual faculty can no longer function. The moral law of God written in the heart has been literally stomped and replaced with cultural immorality. 